Got another one? Looks like one to me. It ain't just about looks, kid. You always remember the first one you find. You could be mining for five months, digging every day, and find nothing. I mean nothing. Then one day, you're headed out and you smell something different in the air. And that's when you realize you have found something. A giant, empty space inside the earth. A cave. We got another one! We got another one! I knew it! <laughs> yes! yes! We got another one! You <laughs> did it! When I first got into the cave mining business, I had no idea how successful it would be. I figured out of every 10 mines, maybe one in 20 would be a cave. But in actuality, every time we've dug, we've discovered a cave. I guess I got a nose for him or something. There's a cave there. There's a cave there. There's a cave right there. I can feel it. There's a cave right there. Who needs a cave? People who got bears. Uh, people who want to see a bear. Cavemen reenactors. Lots of people. Cave miners are the pioneers, and yes, they're very successful. But the way they work is, frankly, it's ridiculous. At Cavern Tech, we take a much more modern approach. Our first idea was to use a giant drilling bore to actually tunnel right through the mountain. Now, about halfway through, there was some discussion about whether or not we'd found a cave. We all got pretty excited. But by the end, it became clear it had just been a long, perfectly circular tunnel the whole time. These big industry types, they just don't get it. You don't have to be a genius to find caves. In fact, based on our experience, it helps if you're not. Our new thing is strip mining. Here's how it works. See, down in the ground there's a cave, right? You just can't see it because it's covered up by earth. But what we do is, we just clear all that away, and boom, there's the cave right in front of you. It's gotta work. Um, no, <laughs> we haven't found anything, not one cave. Uh, just a big, ugly canyon. Um, you know, I figure maybe we're looking in the wrong place again. Um, but no, we just found out that cave miners apparently found three caves right below where we were looking. We were so close. I like to consider myself something of a cave expert. So when I heard what these cave finding companies were doing, I was shocked. I mean, you can't mine for caves. You have to build them. At Chasm Industries, we understand that caves are formed by erosion over millions of years. We think we can get that down to about 150. But of course, first you need something to erode. So those guys are building our first mountain. I've got a plaque in my office says, Scipio Spinks spares no expense. And frankly, I hope our clientele feel the same way. Because this is going to be very expensive. A lot of these new companies, they're just in it for the money. Me, I got caves in my bones. called osteoporosis. Should have drank more milk. Uh, I was actually an accountant at Chasm Industries. And then one day, BAM! The truth hit me like a ton of lightning bolts. A cave isn't the mountain around the cave, it's the space inside the mountain. After I figured that out, it all became clear to me. I quit my job, uh, we took out a second mortgage on the home, and I founded Spelunk Innovation. Here's how it works. Ooh. All right, now this is an empty canister. We're gonna send it up through the Earth's atmosphere where there's a huge reservoir of pure untapped space. We take one of those pieces of space, hopefully a big one, bring it back down to Earth where we inject it into the side of a mountain. Pow! <laughs> now, theoretically, this is impossible, but we're hoping to change that. So I'm looking to get a cave from Mount Greenwood. Uh, or I guess I, I guess I'm looking to find a cave. I'm I'm not sure how it works. Uh, I didn't do a ton of research, but I guess I'll just hear out everyone's proposals and I'll just pick the one that makes the most sense, right? 
So I'm on my way to uh, sell uh, this summer camp on using cave miners to find the cave they're looking for. It's a long drive, so I brought my cave mining mix with me right here. I left my computer with my presentation on it at home, which is unfortunate because I really need for this to go well. I spent a lot of money on my promotional materials. Actually, just my business card, but it was a really expensive business card. Phil! Yeah. Hey! Is. Jason! Thanks for coming. All right, well, I guess it's, uh, and we got enough people here to say the good old Mount Greenwood welcome, which is Welcome. Yeah, this is Thank a you. summer camp. Phil, fully Phil. functioning. Hi, Michael Corkins. I'm Michael a huge Corkins, fan. Phil. I've been Corkins. following Thank you for a long time. This is uh, Brad. Brad oh, no, you... we've, we've met. We've met. Brad. I know. I know you. Jason. Okay. So this is where we're going to be waiting while we do the presentations. Um, not sure where Mr. Spinks is. He's the only one I think we're waiting on. I live for these negotiations. Battling it out with another captain of industry, mono and mono. We'll probably start with a few holes on the golf course, and then uh, smoke a cigar back at the club. And then probably a tour of his polo facilities, which I expect will be excellent. Okay, so before we even get started, I would like to show you my card. Oh, yeah. look at that. Not too shabby. Oh, a little heavy there, A little Mike. bit on the heavy side, yeah. Well... Uh, oh, you know what? I have all of this information. Yeah, but so you might as well, I just, you might as well just, hold on to it just in case you need it. Well, you're, I mean, already, I, you're already holding it. I already have it, though. Yeah, you already hold, you have it. You have it. So just keep it. No, I'm saying I don't it. want it, though. Take the card! Now, imagine there's a computer screen. Now, on the screen, there's a PowerPoint presentation that's really professional, but also cute and fun, but very convincing. Okay? Now, it's all about space and, and mountains and things. Um, okay, I know it's hard to imagine, but really, if you saw my PowerPoint presentation, it's all very clear, and if you have any questions, you have my card, so. Oh, you know what? I think I left that somewhere. Uh, do you have another one? So apparently they don't have a runway, or a heliport, or video phone, so we'll be having our meeting via CB radio. Which is quaint. I have some visual aids. I naturally can't see them. So I'm going to upload them to your server. And you can just log on. We don't have a server. Um, we're a summer camp. Well, what do you have, Jason? What do you have? Hey, look who's here. Oh, good. He invited cave trappers. I trap caves. And the first thing I do is I haul out an area that's about the same size and shape as the cave I'm looking to trap. Then I fill it with bears and bats and puddles of water. You know, things that caves lack. Typically, I watch the trap for three days that I was sleeping. At that point, I usually see a cave go in. And you slam the door! And you hope to God your locks hold. Yeah, um, can we go in the cave? Are you crazy? Won't that cave escape? We can't go in the cave? Well, I, I suppose I could put a window in the door if you and the kitties want to take a look-see at it or whatever you're planning on doing it. Okay, th that sounds fantastic. Uh, I did have one more question. Could you describe what a cave looks like? The Adolf Cave is as big as a blue whale. It weighs practically nothing and is invisible to the human eye. Uh, that's what I thought. As a matter of fact, there could be a baby cave right in between us right now. And if there's a cave here, we'll definitely find it. Can't miss it. All right, that, that sounds pretty interesting. Uh, uh, how many caves have you found using this method? <laughs> okay, I've got something else. Let me show you this. I feel kind of bad for Brent. I mean, he's obviously trying pretty hard, but... Between you and me, the guy can't tell a cave from a hole in the ground. 
And when you get right down to it, it's pretty much all we do. Because it is a strip mine, right? If there had been a cave there, we definitely would have found it. Um, do you have any plans that do work? Uh, um... Hey Brent, how'd it go? I don't what? even... Hello? We got another one. We got another one! We got another one! So you just, you dig a hole and then you call the hole a cave. I dig a hole and I call a cave a cave. It sounds, it just sounds like you're, you're finding the mine that you dug. Okay, l listen again, okay? We're not mining for mines, my friend. No, We're you're, mining you're, you're for not caves. mining for a cave, you're digging a cave. No, you should just tell me, D I'm digging a cave. If we find the cave. And then the mine, what, disappears? I, you, no, the mine, you, he's mixing me up, you're mixing me up with all the well, say. It's kind of a joke, but hey, are we good? No, yeah. I, I think you are going to find something you call a cave. Thank you, I thank you. This is, this guy. That. Uh, that was actually the most fun I have had in a long time. Those guys are just, wow. Um, I did end up going with cave miners, mainly because I think the kids will have just as much fun playing in a mine, so I didn't see really a big problem. Honestly, I'm, I'm a little relieved, because uh, while I was giving my presentation, I, I got an even better idea. See, a, a cave is just a hole, really, so all I need to do is get a bunch of holes. Frankly? I was beginning to doubt Jason had the $17 billion necessary to fund the project. And he wanted it done in a month and a half, which would have been a push. These other guys, they may be smarter, they may be prettier, but they got nostrils in their noses. Me, I got tiny caves. It was bull bullshit. Phil apparently came totally unprepared, um, somehow got it anyway. I went, you know, I went to Kinko's for Christ's sake, you know? It cost me like 70 bucks. And despite the fact that we never found anything, we always did it pretty quickly. It was bullshit. I trap case! Ah!